Hey there gamers, Dreamcast Guy here, and today we're talking about Grand Theft Auto because we just got a giant update to the GTA Definitive Edition Trilogy, and this is a very cool but very, very strange change to the games. Now, if you've never played the GTA Definitive Edition Trilogy, it was very, very famously hated. This was a combo pack that is sort of a remaster, sort of a partial remake of GTA 3, Vice City and San Andreas. But the problem is, when it initially came out, these ports were completely busted. They had glitches, bad frame rate crashes. I mean, it seemed so obviously unfinished. Now, I'm a weirdo. I'm so obsessed with Vice City. I still played quite a bit of the Definitive Edition, even though it definitely was the worst version of the games. Well, about two hours ago, randomly, Rockstar has just released a big patch that completely fixes the trilogy, and everybody is very happy about this, but also kind of scratching their heads. But let's take a look at the changes, the updates, and show some of my gameplay, because yeah, this is legit a good deal. Hi, hope you're having a great day, and if you could, please give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. So, I want to begin by talking a bit about the business side of this because this is the most strange part. So, we know by looking at financial reports and stuff that Rockstar Games is making literally billions of dollars off of Grand Theft Auto V, right? With shark cards, with just selling the game, with GT Online and stuff like that. So, they have decided to funnel a lot of this money into making ports of their older games. So they made a studio called Grove Street Games. This was essentially a tinier studio that's job was to take games like Vice City and San Andreas and stuff, and not just port them, but to bring them to platforms where Grand Theft Auto doesn't exist, putting stuff on Steam and putting stuff on the Nintendo Switch and stuff like that. But as much as people were excited about this idea, the big problem was that it just seemed like Grove Street Games had no idea what they were actually doing. So now, in this new patch, they have removed their name from the starting card. They've completely done it. So I assume this means that uh, they've probably liquidated them. I think Grove Street Games is just gone, gone, gone. But let's talk about the changes to it, because... This is the part that I think people are the most happy about. So when this trilogy initially came out, it actually had two separate versions of it, not just across consoles, but there was a separate and strangely much better mobile version. Yeah, so if you were playing this on consoles, somehow it was more expensive than just playing it on a phone, and the phone version actually had better graphics, cleaner visuals, it was such a strange change. Well, now they have decided to bring a lot of the filters, a lot of the features from the mobile version <laughs> to the console version. You're literally never going to hear me ever say this ever again, but I'm glad they did. They ported the mobile version to consoles, and that's a good thing. What, what a strange sentence. But uh, what they did is they made it so the classic filters are here. Like... Wow. It, it's wild how much better it looks. Essentially, the biggest problem of it, besides just like the visual glitches and stuff with the other versions we got of the Definitive Edition trilogy, was that it tried to overly clean things up. It tried to make things look, I, I don't even want to say realistic, but it all looked like a you know when you get an image and you AI upscale it and it'll mess up the font or it'll mess up like the resolution or it starts to make assumptions about lines and stuff? It looked like that where it was technically higher resolution, but it definitely didn't look good. So I'm going to show you some gameplay here in a second, but let me take a look at one more tweet. Here's the other thing they decided to do. They've actually updated the gameplay. <laughs> this is wild to me. You can now move and shoot simultaneously. This did not exist in the original game. It didn't exist in the original Definitive Edition. This, this is, it's, it's wild. This came out so long ago, and now they're completely repairing it. So this is my gameplay. I decided to boot it up. This is the PlayStation 5 version. Now, let me talk about the one detriment first, as you see me driving around shooting stuff. The biggest problem, the game is still hard locked at 30 FPS. This is PlayStation 5 Pro gameplay. Now, obviously, this is a personal taste, but I just feel like every game, especially remasters and remakes, 
make them 60 FPS. I, I mean, come on. Maybe certain animations and stuff don't quite work, but I would still prefer if the game, when I'm steering or turning or just looking around and stuff like that, 60 FPS is just so much smoother. It's so much better. I would love for this to have a 60 FPS patch, but you can actually toggle on what they call the classic filter. So you can make it look like the launch version of the Definitive Edition, or with this, this is now the classic filter, meaning you can make it look closer to the way it looked on the original version. Now, what this essentially means is that it's not really a blurring effect. It's like a specific, slightly washed out filter. But I feel like I'm making that sound bad. It's trying to make it look how it did back in the early 2000s. When these games were first coming out, 2003, 2004, 2005, these games had that very early 2000s aesthetic. Slightly blown out colors, very funny, quirky graphic stuff that made everything look like an early 2000s movie, right? And that's great. The Definitive Edition, for some reason, removed that. I think this looks a lot better, especially, man, I... I do think the new controls are really good. <laughs> like you can see here, I decided to uh, just start going gun crazy, just blasting, shooting stuff. Explosions look good. Everything is so much smoother. The biggest thing that really stood out to me is that the frame rate no longer dips. This was kind of rare, but I did notice that when stuff was really going crazy, if you were blowing up cars and traffic and stuff like I'm doing here, the game would actually have frame drops, which again, is unforgivable because it is PlayStation 2 ports. How or how in the world is it possible to have a port of PlayStation 2 games running bad on next-gen consoles? Like, if the Switch port had problems, I guess that kind of makes sense, but this is the PlayStation 5. The PlayStation 5 port already had so many glitches, they fixed it. I am so happy because, I mean, th this is the kind of stuff I wish we would see more of, right? where uh, obviously I wish it was completely fixed like this at launch, but I'm happy the developers decided to stick with it, to repair it, to actually complete the project, because now I do think it's worth it. I think technically this is still on some of the, I think it's on PlayStation Plus, and I think like San Andreas, I think is on PlayStation Plus right now. And I think one of the other pieces of the definitive edition, I think it's GTA 3 is on Game Pass try these versions out. I honestly, genuinely, from the bottom of my heart, I liked them in the earlier versions, even when it was busted, but now it is totally, totally, totally worth it. If you're looking for that interesting retro bite to just sort of sate your hunger until we have GTA 6, I highly recommend Vice City. It's quirky, it's cheesy, it's got the best damn soundtrack. Try it. Either way, this is just an off-the-cuff video because, uh, yeah, I'm shocked, but happy shocked. Tell me your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and please keep dreaming. Man, this is so wild. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.